pretty Friday night in lower downtown Denver. Coors Field, located at 20th and Blake, the home of the Rockies for 23 years now. And the Rockies seeing the White Sox. Did you know that the White Sox and the Rockies, or from the Rockies' perspective, they've seen the White Sox fewer times than any other team in baseball? They've played them uh, less than even Tampa. They've only been to Tampa one time, but they've seen uh, the Rays at Coors Field on several occasions. It's been a few years since the Rockies have seen the White Sox. Herman Marquez is getting a foothold around the rubber, 60 feet, 6 inches from home plate, and he's going to face a lineup tonight. Spilly was going over the Chicago White Sox. They are without a couple of regulars. Matt Davidson with 18 home runs is out of the lineup, and obviously El Garcia was having a great year. At different times, he's led the American League in hitting. He has a bit of a thumb injury. He got jammed the other day. It's day to day. Alan Hansen can fly. He's going to lead things off in right field. He's at 282. And then, as you look at the Southwest batting order, a familiar name, Melky Cabrera. He's been around a long time. He's got 10 home runs. He's driven in 51. Then hey, Jose Abreu, Todd Frazier in the middle. Yomer Sanchez at second base. He'll bat fifth. Omar Nevarez will catch and bat six. Adam Engel, Timmy Anderson, former number one pick, and Derek Holland, the longtime Texas Ranger, is on the mound and he'll bat ninth. And the Rockies have the advantage as you look at Marquez because they're used to playing under National League rules. The White Sox are not. But one guy that might be a little strange out there right now is Herman, only because this is only his second start at Coors Field since May 28th. He did it back on June 20th against Arizona, but his last three here at Coors Field, the Rockies are 2-0. He has a 137 ERA, 211 batting average against, and we know what he likes to throw with the fastball, curveball, changeup, slider. His last outing against Arizona, there was just two off-speed pitches that really hurt him. He hung a curveball and also had a slider back up on him, but besides that, I thought his stuff was really good that day. So here's Hansen leading off for just the ninth time this year, and he takes strike one. In his previous eight occasions that he led off, 10 for 31, a 323 average. He started the year with the Pirates. Yeah, claimed off waivers on June 2nd. We were watching him take BP. Uh, he's not going to do it here now with two strikes. But he does the, uh, the the old softball approach yeah, kind on of occasion. Yeah, run towards the pitcher and then just try to slap it past an infielder. Where where his first move is with his left leg crossing over. That's really strange. I mean, even the Ichiro, as much as he moves it in the box, wouldn't really cross over all the way like we saw in batting practice from Alex. Two Let's strikes. See, Alex Allen. Excuse me. Yep. Allen Hansen out of the Dominican. Takes down low one and two. My apologies. I couldn't read my own writing. I, I, and you know you can't read my writing. <laughs> no, I know. I, can't I didn't read look on yours for a cheat No, don't sheet. do that. White Sox got into town Wednesday night. They had yesterday off. And this is softly hit to the second baseman, DJ LeMayhew. One out, Melky Cabrera coming up. Tonight's defensive alignment for the Rockies is brought to you by Experian. So Gerardo Parra back in there. He's in left field. Tapia is in right. Charlie Blackman naturally in center. The more difficult outfield position to play at Coors Field is left of the corner spots. And that's why Parra is in left. He's got gold in his uh, background. Arenado Story, LeMahieu Reynolds with Tony Walters doing the catching. There's a story there. Ryan Hannigan against the left-hander Holland was in the original lineup, but he has a, a strain in the trapezius area, and they tried to work it out during the late afternoon hours, and he just couldn't go. So Tony Walters was added to the lineup, and Hannigan was a late scratch. Left trapezius tightness. Wow. And Cabrera with a, really an awful swing, and he's gone on three pitches. And they went right down the middle, Went up just a little bit, and then back on the outer third, as you see on the Subaru strike zone, right on the black. So that'll bring up the big man that Spilly was talking about a short while ago, Jose Abreu. 293, 16 home runs, 58 driven in. 
And with Flash Bat, you know where he hit his first career home run? Right here. That's right. In fact, he hit a couple out. As the White Sox were here in very early April of his rookie year. The Rockies finished a close second in that bidding war for Abreu when he had defected from Cuba. And he hasn't disappointed in, no. in what he's done. He was, especially that first year, oh, it was unbelievable. Oh, my goodness, yes. So he's a great run producer. And that's slashed to right on an 0-2 pitch, and Abreu's going to have himself a double. And that's what Abreu does. Jose, if, if it's an 0-2 pitch, he's not still taking the same big swing. He'll go the other way with a 23rd double on the season. They pitch him away. He just slices it that way. So I'll bring up Todd Frazier. Todd's a big power guy. The average is way down. Last year was a rough year for Frazier as well. For his uh, final season in Cincinnati, he was an All Star. Todd at 215, but again, dangerous man. He's got big time pop, 16 home runs. Yeah. 97. We've seen a lively fastball of the first 11 that he's thrown tonight. I know 12 total pitches, but 11 of them have been fastballs. Breaking ball, and that's a uh, grounded foul. Last three years for Frazier, go back to 2015, he hit 35 home runs, drove in 89. The batting average, though, has really declined. Well, last year, I mean, listen, it's about production in, in today's game. So 225, dismiss that for a moment. You're talking about 40 home runs and 98 driven in. And that's what they got him for, a little protection for Jose Abreu. Good block by Tony. And now Abreu's trying to move up. Bad idea. Bad idea. That'll end the inning. As Abreu doubles, and then it's cut down by Tony Walters. Delayed reaction. That was weird by Abreu. It always begins, except for yesterday, with Charlie Blackman. Charlie <laughs> hit third yesterday. Here's the Southwest batting order. Nolan got a day off, so Charlie slipped to the third spot, and Tapia led off. Tonight, it's back to normal. Blackman, LeMayhew, Arenado Reynolds, Gerardo Parra in the fifth spot. Cargo being given the uh, day off. Trevor Story, Rymel Tapia bat seventh, and Tony Walters and Herman Marquez. And they'll face Derek Holland. Uh, that was a mainstay for many years with the Texas Rangers, a mainstay on that uh, 
11 team for the Rangers that went to the World Series on the cusp of winning the World Series. Well, in fact. Yeah, 2011 to the 13 season, he was 38 and 21. Not much has changed with what he's thrown. I think the big difference now is really his command uh, of some of the pitches. Because his last six games have been flat out awful. One and four with a 9.33 ERA when the first couple months of the season he was at 2.37. And not a ballpark you typically come to to get healthy. The Rockies need good help on offense. The last 15 ball games, of which only three ended in victories, the Rockies have averaged 3.1 run a game. And when you think about Coors Field in particular, that's in there, two and one. The Rockies should average around six runs a game at home. Well, you have only two guys hitting above 300 during that time, and that's DJ and Tapia. Three and one. But you're right. I mean, this is a ballpark that's suited for this club. They've hit here before. They'll hit here again. They need, as you said in our open, they need a laugher at some point. And that's a good start. Uh, walk on five pitches to Charlie Blackman. The White Sox defense is not good and is brought to you by Experian. They have struggled a lot. This kid can play center field, though. Adam Engel can go get him. He runs really well. He tracks the baseball well. In the infield, Jose Abreu, he's more of a DH, to be fair. He's a tremendous offensive player. He works hard. He's just not really gifted defensively. Timmy Anderson has a lot of gifts, but he's made 19 errors at shortstop. And their ball club is 14th overall in the American League, 29th in all of baseball in fielding percentage at with the 68 errors that they have. DJ at 306, headed to his second All Star game. Fielding percentage is 978. It's always interesting for me and, and Spilly's downstairs field level. Spilly, I know for you and Huey as well. When you see a club come in that they're getting all their information from it from a little bit of advanced scouting and video and charts, how they defend the Rockies hitters. I think when you look at it, especially a guy like Darren, Derek Holland that's been in the big leagues for a while, he has a better understanding of how to pitch these Rockies hitters. But for the most part, you really have to trust advanced scouting. And that's why you always appreciate the guys that are on the road because you know the Chicago White Sox have been at games over the last two weeks, watching these players hit and trying to give a good scouting report for these guys to use. Pulled through the left side past Frazier. And that's the only time that you really see DJ pull the baseball, Huey, when it's an all-speed pitch. He got out on his front side a little bit. And all it is is where the, the barrel is as it's going through the zone. Because if it's an off-speed pitch, the barrel will catch up to the ball just ever so slightly. On the Super Supermo, that's a knuckle curveball that Derek Holland throws. And even with Todd Frazier, you see how far off the line he was playing and just out of his reach on the Subaru Supermo. What did Todd tell us today during BP? He goes, he goes, I can't stand watching Arnado. He, he said it good naturedly. He, he, he in fact loves watching yes. Nolan play third. He goes, but I don't want to have to I, play opposite I, him because he gets to a lot of baseballs <laughs> I can't get to. It's not fair. And, he, and actually, Todd's a solid third yes, baseman. He is. He is. Very solid defensive. Solid, great guy. I mean, one of the top notch guys in all the baseball. A absolutely. So Nolan, a chance to do early damage. Boy, you know how the Rockies need to put up a crooked number early. The way things have gone offensively of late. Here's the 1 0. And that ball's lined to center field, a base hit. Charlie around third. The throw is going to be cut off, and the Rockies take a 1 0 lead. RBI number 64 for Nolan Arenado. Just the start the Rockies were looking for. And you know it's got to be already in Derek Holland's head of what's going on. I, I lead off walk, back to back hits. It's a hanging curveball, it looks like. Nolan goes down and gets it. 
This is nice when you're when you're facing a club. You've, you've just come off losing a tough one yesterday. Get that early lead at home again. Yeah, get your mojo back. That's right. Now here's Mark Reynolds trying to catch fire again, going into the All-Star break. Reynolds yesterday was one for four. A couple hits in the previous game against Cincinnati. The Rockies split that series two apiece. Colorado lost six to three yesterday to the Reds. Good job, all the fans and Rockies PR for making the strong push for Mark Reynolds to get into that all-star game. Obviously, Justin Turner won. He had 20 million votes. Justin Turner did. Yeah, and here's how it finished up. Bryant, Rendon, Marky Mark, and then Justin Bohr with a 2-0 count. That's the second. We're, we're going to see uh, the pitching coach, Don Cooper, walk out. But one more note, as Spilly was mentioning, Mark Reynolds and all those guys are deserving of being all stars. And I thought the fans did a great job in supporting Reynolds and 20 million votes for Justin Turner. Well, I heard his wife kind of got, got, yeah, got involved and they set up a table somewhere by Dodger Stadium, and that's how they all got it going. But for Mark, it's the second time in his career that he's lost out in the final vote. Yeah. Kenley Jansen, uh, a big assist also to Justin yeah. <laughs> That ribby a moment ago by Arenado, his 17th first inning RBI. The only guy who's driven in more in the first inning, the guy who just left, Joey Votto, has 18. Mark Reynolds, by the way, is also the only guy in the Rockies lineup to have ever faced Derek Holland. Reynolds is three for nine. Four pitch walk that loads the bases and it brings me to my stat of the night. Yes. 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 Spilly, listen up, bud. Okay. Last 42 starts for the Chicago White Sox. Their ERA is 553, and they have only this is an American League club given. Okay. Right? They have only 10 quality starts out of their last 42. And it's not starting well for Rick Renneria's club tonight. Ouch. That that's that's a hard number to even fathom. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So here's Para, back in the lineup. He missed a month, and he runs out there. And he's got the bases loaded. He takes a strike. Para out of the lineup when he was on the DL. The Rockies were 13 and 15, but they're 22 and 14 when he starts. Tells you some of the value that he brings each and every night. Boy, Adam Engel is really shallow in center. And that is pulled foul. Shockingly shallow. I don't know if I've ever seen a center fielder, in, un, in, unless it's a situation where you're trying to save the game and it's the bottom of the ninth inning, the winning runs at third. I can, I've never seen a center fielder that shallow. Uh, I've, I've seen one, and he was with Tampa Bay Rays two years ago. Kevin Kiermaier. There he is, is right one, there. He's the only one that I've seen play that shallow, and that's the right spot to be. You've always why, been a big proponent that? of that, Billy. Because a ball hit, it's squared up, it's over your head regardless. You get burned here more by, by shallow fly balls than any other ballpark in baseball. This is the largest baseball field in all of sport. Para, and it goes off of the pitcher, Holland, and the Rockies get another run, and the bases stay loaded. Nice little break for Parr in his return. And also, if there was any question about his leg and, and how it was feeling, it was just answered there. Because you would know it immediately, you have to run hard out of the box. It's balled back up the middle. Holland's all cross-footed. He's, he's, by the time he finishes, he's not in a good fielding position, tries to reach back over to his left foot, can't get it, goes off his shoe, and then Gerardo hustling down the line. So it goes off the heel of his left foot, then Gerardo running hard, a little lunge at the end. That leg's fine. I'll tell you what, I like this matchup. I know Trevor has struggled. I like this matchup for Story. 
takes a strike. Got a breaking ball at 77. Story 223, 11 home runs, 33 driven in. Yesterday, Trevor was two for four, had an RBI. Holland will come inside with a little bit of a cut fastball. He's not, and he'll double up on it. Sometimes you'll see pitches, they don't like to double up inside, but he'll do it. And then he'll throw, he'll backdoor the slider. Really doesn't throw the back foot slider a whole lot. 1-1. One, one. That's, that's it. Fouled Double, off. Doubled up with the fastball yep. coming Came back in inside. Two runs in, nobody out for the Rockies in the first. Arenado at third, Reynolds at second, par of the infield hit, he's at first. Two two on story. Might have caught a break on the Subaru strike zone. That curveball. Three for five this year, bases loaded. Wow, that was close, but inside, and it's three and two. That's another one that easily could have gone the other way on the Subaru strike zone. Both of those last uh, two offerings. Touched the inside corner. And well received by Omar behind the plate. You can see, though, from that angle, it was inside. Yeah, on that angle, I yeah. agree with you. I think it's more inside than it appears on that uh, chart. Line drive, base hit. This will score two. Story comes through. It's 4 0 Colorado. Little inside out swing and Spilly. That was a that was more of a two strike approach, which I know you and Huey have been calling for. I think when you watch Trevor's story, for me, it's always been timing and effort. If you limit the effort for Trevor, he's so strong. If he hits the ball, it goes. And staying inside the baseball, not trying to do too much, inside out swing. Granted, that is pretty much middle middle and up, but you're still taking a good swing, and he has a better shot of hitting the ball consistently if he has that approach. And during that hole at bat, though, Spilly, they kept trying to come inside. They finally made a mistake, and he made a pay for it. And I think that's, as a hitter, if you keep going to the same area, eventually you're not going to hit it. And they did. I mean, hit it, meaning Derek Holland didn't hit his location. Here's Rymel Tapia. This is a comeback to Holland. He didn't know where to go initially. And, wow. Thank you. The, the, the White Sox are completely out of sorts. Well, Derek he, Holland's out of sorts. Yeah, because you want to turn that up the middle, and then he decides to get the runner at third and kind of almost handcuff Todd Frazier. Well, he's Frazier's not thinking it's coming to me. He's thinking it's going back to second base and Tim Anderson. All right, now look at this. Look at all this area. The Todd's over here saying, well, okay, you're going to start to turn two. Wait, oh, wait, you're going to throw it to me? I don't even know where the bag is. I got to find it. So instead of being two outs and only a runner on, now you only got one out, still a chance for two guys to be driven in. Here's Walters outside on Tony. Rockies have scored four runs here in the first inning. For the third time this year, they have never scored more than four in a first frame this season. Walters had an RBI double and yesterday six to three loss to the Reds. Great speed on base story and Tapia. DJ Rayburn says that's a strike one and one. This is kind of a, a going to be an interesting day for Tony because he's not in the original starting lineup but then he's put in there later. Being the backup catcher, once you're not in the lineup, I don't want to say you shut it down, but you're, you're thinking, well, if I do, it, it might be the eighth inning, but it's going to be hard to get thinking I'm going to be in early in the game. 
unlike a position player where you, you know, you might have to go into the fourth inning and double switch. Do a quick crash course on the lineup. <laughs> the get with lineup, your pitcher. Get with your pitcher. Because Ryan took batting practice. Everything looked okay there. Two and two. Next pitch for Holland will be number 30 here in the first inning. Tony always seems to find his way on base. He's hitting 280. His on base percentage is almost 100 points higher than that, 373, which is the third best in the National League among catchers. Also has 23 walks. Blue Story almost swiped third. This is on the ground to second. There's one, and Anderson on to first. So eight come to bat. And four score for the Rockies. Four runs on four hits. That was the start they needed. Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the 2017 Toyota Tundra in your hometown Toyota stores. By UC Health, live extraordinary. And by Southwest Airlines, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By the Boulder Flatirons, like that trail. That's beautiful. Rockies four, White Sox nothing as we go to the second inning with Jeff Houston and Ryan Spielborgs. I'm Drew Goodman. First to three between the Rockies and the White Sox. And Todd Frazier, who was at the plate when Jose Abreu watched the ball get blocked by Tony Walters. He didn't go, and then when Tony picked up the baseball, inexplicably, that's when he decided to go, and he was out. As the great Vince Scully would say, from you to me. This ball's hammered left center field. And it is going to short hop the wall. Frazier is going to stop at second with a leadoff double. That was loud. Todd Frazier has been making a career out of hitting the ball hard and far for a long time. Gets an elevated fastball. Rips it for his 14th double in the left center field gap. Spill, you know what had to help him in that at bat? That he had a partial at bat. He swung at a 97 mile an hour fastball last inning and he was tardy on it. He, he had to learn a little something about the velocity from Marquez, don't you think? You, you never mind it when a teammate makes an out and you're in a count that's 1 1, 1 2, and you get to start fresh. 
Start fresh with the new inning, and you get to hunt a fastball on a guy that you hadn't seen before. You're right. You get an opportunity to, to now know, hey, I need to gear up a little bit better. And that's what he did. Yolmer Sanchez at the plate. And he hits a fly ball to center field. Blackman will try to get behind this. Frazier's going to test the arm. It's on the line. And a little bit off. So Frazier moves up on the fly ball by Sanchez. Join in on the conversation tonight. Send us your questions, your thoughts, your photos. Use Twitter or Instagram. Include the hashtag Toyota Talk. So with one out, Omar Narvaez will come up, the young catcher. Hitting 345 over his last nine ball games. So get a run home. DJ will throw out Narvaez four to one. That was a pretty good pitch from Herman because that jammed Omar pretty bad. I want to get that pronunciation right. It's Narvaez. 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 Two why, outs. Adam Engel comes up. That's why I went with the Omar. Narvaez. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Oh, and one on angle. A lot of times it's no different for you guys, the players in interleague play, where there's not great familiarity, certainly it's with the bullpens. And a lot of times when a team is in transition, like the White Sox, they're they're in the middle of a rebuild. And there's still several players that are probably going to move either in the next few weeks or certainly in the offseason. Well, the other portion, too, is where their AAA is. It's not in the same league that you're in. So that, it can't even get a scouting report there. Engel hits a towering fly ball to left center. Parra is back there. He makes the catch. Lead off double by Frazier. He would come around to score. The Rockies up four to one, middle of two. White Sox with four in the first. We head down to the bottom of the second inning. Two counterparts, Rick Renteria and Bud Black, are very familiar with each other. Renteria got his first attempt to coach at the major league level because of Bud Black, and they share a very special relationship. He's a great baseball man. Uh, he's, I, you know, I love his, his energy and intensity. Uh, and, I, and I, I value our friendship. 
probably more than anything, that's the, the thing that's most important is that, you know, I, uh, I see him as a true friend. He's, he's wonderful. There's not better praise that anybody can give a teammate than saying you're a true friend. And it's really special to watch these two together. Uh, you hear their conversations about just being intertwined. Six years in the San Diego Padres organization. He was the first base coach from 2008 to 2010, and then came back in 2011 to 2013. Renteria was the Cubs manager for a little bit until Joe Madden took over, and now he got a second opportunity with the Chicago White Sox. And guys, when we talk about player coaches, these two guys are certainly that. Well, if you think about this, two of Buddy Black's very closest friends in the game are Rick Renneria and Dave Roberts. That misses on Marquez, it's two and two. We know Buddy very well. We knew him fairly well when he was in San Diego. One of the best people, forget sports, he's one of the best people going. In dealing with Rick Renneria through the years, that's a fair ball. Pick up that thought in a moment. Marquez will roll into second with a double leading off. Holland thinking, well, I'm going to get a reprieve. I got the pitcher to lead off the second inning. Guess again. And get that baseball. First career double for Herman. Pulls the hands in ever so slightly to sneak this ball down the third base line. Go ahead and do it, Herman. Pretty good swing. That was real good. Blackman coming up. Rocky's got four in the first. Just to finish that thought, Rick Renneria, we've dealt with him in the past. Rick Renneria is a terrific guy. Dave Roberts, another guy we've known for a long time. Dave I, Roberts, a classy guy, great guy. Hey, you're not going to expect three, three guys. Left. Yeah, three guys that are very similar in, in how they handle people and their demeanor. I'm shocked that they're close friends. And one final thought, I think, Spilly nailed it when he said, when are you one of those true friends in baseball? Because we have a lot of acquaintances in baseball, people that we're, you know, we have friendships with, but not true friends. And, and to say this guy is a true friend of mine, that, that speaks a lot about the relationship. 1-0 on Blackman, and that's a strike, one and one. I always think back to Green Bay Packers and Mike Holmgren, right? The whole coaching tree of all the coaches that came out of that group. Think back to Mike Sosha and that group in 2002 with the Angels. Bud Black, Joe Madden, Ron Renicky, and then where they kind of went off and the guys under them that are not now managers in the major leagues, the Dave Roberts, the Rick Renterias. It's pretty remarkable looking at the history of Bud and where it all kind of stems from and where he learned from. So uh, instead of six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon, it's just like two or three degrees of separation from Mike Sosha. <laughs> right. I don't know any managers <laughs> that are within like 11 degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> One and two. And this is in the air to deep center field. Now it's a long run for Engel. And he'll get there mid track and moving up is Marquez. Engel, nice. has, Engel had to run because of where he's playing, had to run an open 60 to get to that baseball. We told you he's very good defensively. Well, and that's why he plays so shallow, because he feels confident going back on the baseball. So he's right here. He's going to have to run all the way back to the wall right there to make the catch. And how about Marquez, where he goes back and tags up? The base running there. It wasn't, I'm going to drift off, he goes back and catches up, go back and tag. No, he immediately knew what he had to do with no outs. Infield comes in not all the way. They're about halfway because of a pitcher being at third base. DJ had a base hit last inning. And he's out in front of that off-speed delivery. It's 0-1. You don't mind that that did that depth that they're playing right now drew with the pitcher at third base it's different obviously if there's a position player but you just feel like you, there's a little more pressure on you if there's a position player there instead of a pitcher. And again that's twice in a row he hit a cue shot. Soft stuff coming from Holland against LeMayhew. DJ over his last 16 games hitting 435. In this tough period, the last two and a half weeks, 
Only two guys hitting above 300. LeMayhew, as we just stated, and Rymel Tapia. 0 2. DJ is such a professional. Bet on him all day to find a way to get this run home, even behind two strikes. It does it'll be his 40th RBI of the season. This is a real good number hitting out of that two spot. will get it done deep left center field in fact Cabrera stopped running it's gone I didn't know he hit it that far told you to get the job <laughs> done and he'll hit himself in also two run home run LeMay you make it six to one Colorado remember what he hit for a base hit to, to left field his first time up it was a knuckle curveball he pulled it the barrel comes through just a little bit faster on the off speed pitch. Well, he's just trying to elevate the ball. This time they throw a slider on the Subaru Super Bowl. How about this? Look at how low he had to go down to get that ball. That was like Blackman's home run a week and a half ago. Remember that? Yeah. I think Charlie still might have a beat, but that's what friends do try to beat each other on different pitches. True friends. Here's that's Arenado. Right. True friends. Chicago's going to shift the second baseman Sanchez to the middle of the diamond. So hey, now Spilly, I, I'm, watching, I'm watching Melky Cabrera, and I'm like, why did he stop running? So you thought it was in the gap, and you're like, why did he just said, hey, you go get it out of Mingo? He evidently had a, had the right beat on it. It was gone. I have a great side view of DJ swing, and off the bat. DJ doesn't typically he runs really hard out of the box and it, it looked like he caught it where he thought he got it. This is lined right at Cabrera. Two outs. For DJ. He's down and then he knew he got it. I'm not sure he thought he, he got enough to climb over that wall though. He knew it. That's a, the way that he came out of the box, the way he well, threw the bat. I mean, that was thing, that's his way of, of styling with it. The, the only thing that I, I, I questioned because of that that leg injury in his groin, I wasn't I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to to really sprint out of the box. Inside on Reynolds, that is one area where he is protected in. There's a lot of hard hit balls going on down there tonight on the Rocky side. It's Billy. It's loud over here. We may have you sleep there, Spilly, if this continues. Well, uh, I'll be, you I, know what? Look, I will. I will black. Look, I cannot see you right now because the sun's in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so let That's me just the best I'll, shot. I'll, a smiley face. Yeah. It's hard to do it backwards. Not here, but it's really bright. No, do put well, the paper up again. That's the best shot we've had okay. of you all season. Yeah, here you go. Beside, well, that seat and also your rally seat the last time we were at home. I'm prepared to go up to the rally seat if I have to. Um, <laughs> this is what I'm looking into. That's what Jose Abreu is looking into. Pay attention for a ground ball to third. Three and one on Reynolds. You have your sunscreen on? No, I wasn't expecting to have to wear sunscreen. Not for a night game. Three balls, two strikes on Mark Reynolds. That home run for LeMay, he was 30th career home run. You're bragging on LeMay before he popped that ball over the left center field wall that is then 39 RBIs at the two spots, a great number. Well, now he's got 41. There's only two guys in the league. National League who have more RBIs. Corey Seager 44, Eric Thames 42 out of the uh, two hole. Well, both those guys, though, hit a lot more home runs than DJ. Yep. Remember, DJ also started very slowly with runners in scoring position. So a lot of the damage he's done from a ribby standpoint has come 
from May 1st forward. And that is held by Omar Narvaez. DJ LeMay, who a two run home run. Let's not forget Herman Marquez. He got it started with a double. The Rockies with a six to one early lead. As we go to the top of the third inning, fans, when the Rockies score seven or more runs, it's been a while. You get to go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six, and you get your Rockies taco special when you do live boss at Taco Bell. The Rockies are a runaway. Here's Tim Anderson, and he takes up an in ball one. Anderson, a lot of ability, still trying to figure it out at the big league level like so many young players. a strike he's five for his last 41 one thing we should point out in, in fairness to Tim and I think a lot of times fans don't know all that's going on with a player away from the diamond as we all know those things can affect you at your workplace their workplace is in front of millions of people Tim Anderson lost his best friend earlier this year unfortunately his uh, he was murdered and Tim left the club for a few days. I mean, well, I, I can't, yeah, yeah. For me to say anything beyond that would no. be silly and foolish. I, I, I can't relate. And uh, he's a young man who's trying to figure it out at the major league level. And, Just and 24 he's got years tragedy of off the field. Yep. Yeah. For Tim, you just wish nothing but the best. Yeah. Derek Collin doesn't get to swing the bat much. Never has been an American League player his whole career. Yeah, the 071, that's one for 14. <laughs> Anthony's one and one on Holland. But that one hit came this year. He's one, but he's, you know, he's saying he's going to be hit five. That's last year. Or last year, excuse me, last year, yeah. One for two last year. Big year for him. Well, it's 500. 500. I wonder who taped his bat. <laughs> You're saying he didn't do it. Oh, you know look what? At that. He's got another hit. And immediately he pointed to the dugout. So it must be that guy who taped it or that guy's bat. Here's the deal. So last year, what'd you say he hit 500? Yes. This year he's hitting 1,000. One day, years from now, be sitting around the dinner table and go you know I had a couple good offensive years I had that year I hit 500 and that year I was hitting a thousand okay but now watch him point <laughs> okay so now you got to find out who taped the bat and whose bat he was using it's like a tennis player Wimbledon's going on right now tennis players throw you know when Wimbledon they'll throw an extra tip to the guy who's uh, restringing their rackets every night why not yeah 
one strike on Alan Hansen. He had a soft liner to LeMahieu leading off the ball game. And this is right at Reynolds. And they get uh, the double play in a different way. Three and six with a tag, tag, tag called by Mark Reynolds. 6-1. Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. This is kind of a, a this horse tooth reservoir by Fort Collins. A lot of CSU Ram folks uh, out on the uh, lake. This is a funny exchange. Why? Look at Buddy Black, Tony Diaz, just in case interpretations needed with Herman Marquez. He says, belt high, and he w wags his finger. Uh, no. Notice how he also gave him a little wink after it's all done, yeah. said done. And there was some truth there. He's trying to get him to make sure that he knows what he wants him to do. So here's Gerardo Parra, back after missing a month with that quad injury. And he had a, a base hit to drive in a run off of the leg of Derek Holland in that four run first for the Rockies. Just three rehab games for Parr and he's back in the big leagues. He went down to Albuquerque and played. Career 370 hitter against the White Sox. The Pale Hose. <laughs> Spilly, were you ever a fan of the pale hose when you were a kid in Santa Barbara? I don't even know what that means. It means the uh, the Red Sox had red stockings and the White Sox had white stockings. I was a fan of the shorts that the White Sox wore. Oh, oh, Today really? would be a great day for the shorts. Are you serious? It's hot. You're telling me when you were in the big leagues, that you would have worn I, those I shorts. Have worn shorts. <laughs> no, I would have wanted them to wear shorts. There's nothing wrong with some, watching another team wear shorts, just not. How much come it, on, they no. hated yeah, that. yeah, they they had to. Have. Because there's no way I would want to play in shorts in a big league game and slide and slide. Come on now. You that, just got to style with it. You got to well, slide I, head first. You would style until you got hurt. Is what you do. You're not getting hurt because you're wearing shorts, Huey. Come on. No, you're you're getting hurt because you're sliding and diving. Vec as in rep. That was one of those ones from Bill Vec that uh, you still kind of cringe? think about cringe. Yeah, that the uh, disco night. Disco night. Thank you. Where they demoed all those. They did. ESP. ESPN did a 30 and 30 on that. They had no idea that that promotion was going to turn out anywhere close to it. <laughs> they didn't see that in their crystal they ball. They didn't see that one coming. Okay. They thought disco was huge. 
That's a strike one and two on Story. Trevor a two run single in the first. Six one Colorado. They've out hit the White Sox. The Pale Hose six to three. And Story strikes out. Second strikeout for Holland. Two outs, nobody on. Ramel Tapia. Nineteen seventy six. Bill Vec said, I think shorts will be a good idea. How many games did they play in that? There's a handful. He was a master promoter. Remember his son ran the St. Paul Saints for a long time. Uh -huh. and they, they had really innovative and shall we say different or <laughs> unique <laughs> promotions like Beck. St. Paul Saints just built a new stadium a year ago. And you know where? Huey, where's that? St. Paul? Downtown St. Paul. Um, <laughs> and uh, a couple of the schools play there. Hamlin University, D3 school, good school up St. Yeah, Paul. School. They play there, yeah. And I'm telling you what, it's a it looks like a beautiful new AAA stadium. Three one. And this ball's hammered to deep right, and it is off the Wall, it'll be a double for Tapia with two outs. No play for Alan Hansen out there. Now he was the Rockies' well, best hitter against the Reds. And he's one for two tonight. And his sixth double of the season gets ahead on the count on the Subaru Supermo. About belt high fastball. And make no mistake about it, he elevates it over the head of the right fielder Hansen. Scoring position. Tony Walters, first base is open. Holland got him to ground into a 4 6 3 his first time, and now we'll visit at the mound. Narvaez going out to talk to Holland. This is the 13th meeting all time between the Rockies and White Sox. The White Sox lead the season series 7 to 5. Oddly enough, the Rockies, the one time they went to Chicago, they won the series two to one. So it's the White Sox that have played well at Coors Field. They've won six out of nine here. But all that history stuff, Billy, doesn't mean anything because the last time the White Sox were here was 2014. And the only guy that was playing for the White Sox, to the best of my knowledge, was a break. Rosters have changed significantly. 0-1. Oh, one. one and one. And that was in April too. Chris right out of spring training. I think it was the second or third series. We don't need to see professional <laughs> ball players playing at, in shorts. The, the White Sox were two and one when they wore their shorts. There's a lot that could go wrong. So it was only three games? Yep, two and one. Should have kept them on. They, they would have won 115 games. What were they thinking? <laughs> I just looked at some of the videos of the guy sliding, though. That, no. You find out who's tough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I'm out. Billy, how's your artwork coming? Like this? <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think you've, you got to do a little more with the eyebrows. Yeah, there's more. I mean, I, I did get, I could pluck them for you right here. <laughs> two and two. I, don't know, I think it's pretty good. 
So I, I mean, listen, I can't tell the difference. You know, there's, there's a striking <laughs> resemblance. You look great. Your teeth are bigger than I thought they were also. Veneers, I just got them in. Nice. <laughs> Expensive, though, huh? Slowly hit to second. And a nice play by Sanchez to end the inning. So the Rockies got a two-out double from Tapia. They do not score. We're headed to the fourth. I don't know who that guy is, but he's participating tonight. Timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. We flash back to 1998. You know that today's the day, back in 98, that the All-Star Game took place here at Coors Field. Special moment in Rockies history. I remember it well. What? What did you always lament about the All-Star Game? You know my story, right? Right. That I walked in and they offered everybody who was coming in a beanie baby, you know, and I said, I don't want to. I came in with Steve Lyons. I had just done a, a show on Fox with Steve Lyons. He took the beanie baby. I think he took mine also because I said, I don't want it. I had a baby at home, Jacob. I, no. mean, what, I mean, he's literally an infant. So I didn't take the beanie baby, and two weeks later, I'm seeing it selling for $1,500 online. Yeah, now they're anywhere from $18 to $50 on eBay today. But I kept it because my kids wanted me to keep it. They said, Dad, you can't sell it. I said I could pay for the tickets and everything, and now look at it. I had to bring it from home tonight. I always felt like the, the uh, Beanie Baby would have a depreciating value. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> but I still, I, I brought mine just because you you always said, you always had a story about it. Yeah. Yeah, so there. I had to go steal it from my daughters. Do you believe when they, sh literally, they shot up within a couple oh of weeks goodness. to a couple hundred, uh, to, to like $1,500. I could have paid for all the tickets, all the drinks, everything, and still had enough left over for a nice little vacation. Yeah. Well, guess what? Santa Barbara is connected to Beanie Babies, and thank you, Ty Warner. That was the inventor of the Beanie Babies because we have a lot of... Uh, the oh. glove of Trevor Story, Melky Cabrera with a base hit. Well, we have a lot of nice things in Santa Barbara because of Ty Warner uh, and those Beanie Babies. So thank you, Drew. Thank you, Huey. You got it. Yeah, I messed that one up. One of many. <laughs> Jose Abreu doubled down the right field line on an 0-2 pitch his first time. So you and I were uh, hanging around the White Sox dugout this afternoon during batting practice. And Jose Abreu had three bats all doctored up ready for the ball game. We didn't realize they were Abreu's bats at first until we looked on the knob and they had his number 79 on him because the autograph on the bat is distinctly Albert Pujols. We did a double take. We're like, wait, no, no, wait. This. Not one. No, all three of them. All three of them said Albert Pujols. So I, I, I was around the batting cage then, and, and a guy that I played with and against at times, Steve Sparks, our assistant hitting coach, he had grabbed the bat and said, feel this, Huey. So I picked it up. It's pretty light. You would think Albert, you know, 
uh, Abreu, big, strong, strapping guys to be 34 ounce bat. It's right around 32 ounces, maybe a little less. Yeah. And there are the other two. There, there are a lot of guys, and you guys can explain this certainly better than I can, that they're not always using their own model. Right? Spilly, did you use your own bat, or did you sometimes, you know, find a bat that, that an opponent, you know, had and traded a bat with them, that sort of thing? My teammate, Brad Hopp, I loved the model that he came up with. He actually invented his own, it was called a BH-11, Brad Hopp 11. And it was a very thin handle with a C-271 head, so just a standard barrel with a thin handle. That's fair. See if the Rockies can twist one, and... Out at first base. Five, four, three. And Rick Renneria wants his video team to check that out. Wasn't hit extremely hard by Abreu. Nolan gets rid of it, and then DJ did the right thing coming across the bag. So it's down the line. DJ comes across the bag They're to good. make sure he doesn't get interfered with on the Subaru Supermo and they get the throw off. They're going to look at it. Spilly, you were field level. We're going to see right here if he got the... Yeah, he's, he beat it. Yeah, he did. But I was watching him run up the line. And again, we don't see the White Sox. We see Abreu highlights on television. He's hitting the ball over the wall. He's jogging, right? He moves pretty well for a big guy. Does. He's 6'3 and was, was moving. I mean, granted, the ball wasn't hit hard. From my vantage point, I thought, I thought he was safe. Yeah, and standing or hitting that top portion of the bag is not what you want to do as a base runner, but he will be called safe by Sam Holbrook, who's a crew chief and also the guy at first base. So they brought in Greg Gibson to help along Listen to the call from New York, and he is clearly safe on the Subaru Supermo. Not real hard coming out of the box, but then about halfway, he picks it up. Thus, in the baseball vernacular, he runs pretty well underway. The, uh, the key phrase, underway. Todd Frazier, a double to the base of the wall in left center field his first time, and takes inside ball one. Did you know when Todd was growing up in New Jersey, he was drafted by the Rockies at a high school in the 37th round. That was the 04 draft. Went to Rutgers and eventually was a first round pick in 07 of the Reds. Here's a strike. Good friends with a guy that's not going to play in the All-Star game this year because he's going to be rehabbing and Mike Trout. Yeah, they're very close friends. Both the New Jersey natives. Back when they were playing together on, at one point on, on a national team, even though Todd's six years older, because they always hung around together, they referred to uh, everybody said, Trout, you hanging out with your dad? <laughs> We asked him this afternoon when you first saw him as a high school player which one of his many tools stood out the most to you and he said probably his speed initially he said you know he was a good hitter he said but you know he, he was looked like a football player and could really as we all know run because I when he started doing what he did in the minor leagues and then ultimately the big leagues initially Frazier it was like, wow, I wow. didn't couldn't didn't imagine him hitting the way he uh, he's hit. It's funny you say that. That was my feeling of Todd. The very first time I saw Todd Frazier swing, I was in the minor leagues. And a strikeout of Frazier by Marquez Tugon. I was in Triple A with the Columbus Clippers, which is uh, an affiliate of the Indians, and we faced. Todd Frazier's Louisville bats a bunch of times. And Frazier, the first month of 2012, I'm telling you, this guy would have swung at pitches that hit the pole. It was 45 feet he was swinging. And when he made it to the major leagues, I go, how? How in the world did this guy even made it? 
he just found a way to simplify his approach. Nolan has a simple approach. If you hit it within four continents of him, he's going to field it and throw you out. 6-1 Rockies. Lead off in the fourth. That worked out well in the second when he doubled and eventually scored a DJ LeMayu home run. Let's flash back those three ball games in '76. This is Ralph Gar at first base and the ageless uh, one at the time, Minnie Minoso, coaching first. Ralph Gar could really run, so I, it, Ralph doesn't look happy in this picture because he because he would have had to slide. Right. Ralph I'm Gar. the one that's going to come up with the strawberry, not you. Yeah, I remember, Huey, you and I are basically the same age. You're a little older. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We go through this yes, several every times year. a year. Yeah. Um, Ralph Gar, remember with, with the Braves? Didn't he hit like 353 one year? We'll have to get Dougie on that one. I remember he could hit. He could flat out hit. He hit three. Uh, it's confirmed, actually, okay. before Dougie could get to it. This is going to be a ground ball to second, and Sanchez throws to Abreu. In 1974, he hit. Yeah, for whatever reason, if, if baseball people we remember stats, he hit 353 in 74. We're 306, I'm being told right now. Is that right? Yeah. He could play. He could run, yes. too. Good player. Oh, Manny Minosa, too. Being around, I mean, how many decades did he play in? He was 50-something. He was 53 when he played his last game, Doug. Is that right? I don't think I, I could go out on a limb here and say 53 is not correct. There's a break, but you, you don't think he was that old? No, I think Satchel Page was the oldest, right? No, 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 no. Could, Satchel Page was, well, maybe you're right. I thought Satchel was in his late 40s. One ball, one strike on. Charlie. Minoso, Spill, are you listening? Listen. Minoso played in two ball games in 1980 at the age of, at, at my age, 54. Come on! Yeah, I see you smiling. You That's could crazy. Believe it. I just cannot believe it. Yeah. That's, I don't believe you. I 54 would, years old? He was 54. How old was Satchel when he ended up? Dougie's working on that. Fifty-four? They didn't have anybody younger? Let the kids play, man. He was three for seven, hit two bombs and a double. No, come on. That I made up. 
Page. Wow. It's 59. Yeah, he pitched one game at 59. There you go, I win. This ball's well hit to right, way back. Gone. Just enough. Little tune up for next Monday night. Home run number 19 for Blackman. That is the first home run that Derek Holland has given up to a left-hander this year. He only gave up one to a left-hander last year, and that was Kyle Seeger way back on June 10th. Charlie Blackman getting loose, cranking out his 19th home run on the Subaru Supermo. It just gets over the top of that auxiliary scoreboard and skips into the stands for a nice souvenir. Taco time. <laughs> Strike one on LeMayu. He homered last time up. So everybody gets tacos tomorrow with the Rockies eclipsing that seven run mark. Make your way to participating Taco Bell locations between four and six. To get your Rockies taco special, Lip Moss at Taco Bell. Last time you got to hand out tacos, June 18th. Been That's too not long. right. That's not right. Too long. Two strikes on LeMahieu with one out. 7 1 Colorado. Shallow left field, and this one is caught out there by Cabrera. Go back to Charlie's home run. As I mentioned, just the first home run to a lefty this year that Derek Holland's given up. The other 17 have been to right handed batters. But this is why he's an all star. And then out at the wall, watch out close on the Subaru Supermo. Well, I guess it was a little bit further than what I thought. You saw off the bat watching it live. Some of the stat cast numbers that just popped out on the home run. 22 degrees. That was a launch angle. That's not very high. You don't see a lot of those at 22 degrees, but 105 miles an hour off the bat. Ball's crushed. The lowest home run hit last year, not this year, last year in baseball, had a launch angle of 14 degrees. This is right at Hanson. And that was a home run the very first week of the season by Cargo off of Zach Granke. 14 degree launch angle. That one also. I drive home run. Charlie Blackman makes it 7 1 Colorado with his 19. Top of the fifth inning, we also, since it's Friday night, check in with the good skipper of the Rockies, Buddy Black. Buddy, this is so much more pleasant. <laughs> this is much more like it, right? Absolutely. You know what? You guys needed, we said off the top of the broadcast, you needed one of those outings where you threw up a laugher. Now, I know there's a lot of baseball left, and you're not putting it in the left-hand column yet, but it's really good to see the high-quality swings, isn't it? Yeah, a lot uh, a lot of good at-bats. Uh, right, right from the get-go, Charlie's walk, uh, DJ snuck one through, Nolan... Uh, Hard line drive. Mark drew a walk. Caught a break with Parr on the comebacker, but there's been uh, good at bats away through. Charlie there, Tapia. Uh, you know, Tony's had a couple rough ones, but uh, you know, we need Marquez to keep going, and let's just keep adding on. Well, let's do that. Add a couple more runs, and Marquez continue to pitch well. I'm with you. I'm with you, Yui. Let's do it. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks, Thanks buddy. as always. All right, boys. So Marquez ready to go to the catcher for the White Sox, Omar Narvaez. 
Narvaez takes a strike. He had an RBI ground out in the second inning. They like this kid defensively, and he gives you competitive at bats like that. But the problem is he now has 34 hits, Huey. He has 37 total bases this year. He has, Some of those will change, he has only it, three doubles. Yeah, no triples, no homers. He gets a little more aware of his surroundings at the major league level when he can start focusing a little bit more on his offense. Right now it's primarily geared to the defensive end of it. He'll bring up Adam Engel, the center fielder. This guy has some speed. This guy does have some wheels. He made a really nice running catch in center field. He plays very shallow earlier in the ball game. Another one of those products. That's a really good pitch, 0 and 2. It's another one of those products out of Louisville. They have a good, very good program. Not, it might even be a great program there they have going down in Louisville now. They crank out the talent in baseball. Pretty good hoops, too. Football also is great. Athletic school. Billy, can you see, or are you still uh, looking into that sunset? No, I'm good now. It, it's actually, it's really nice. It's oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Put that, put, put the other. I mean, thing yes, here, yeah. I can't see it all. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a little more Wait, artwork. Did Tatum draw that, or did you? That's me. This is Picasso. <laughs> It's on one line. It's what? abstract painting is what it is. <laughs> oh boy. Two strikes on angle. Swung on and missed on that curveball from Marquez. That is strikeout number three for Herman. Fans MLB.TV Premium. It's back and better than ever. You watch every out of market regular season game on, on over 400 supported devices. Visit MLB.TV for more details. Here's Tim Anderson. He had a sharp one hopper to DJ his first time up. This is to third. Nolan with a perfect feed. Anderson runs too well. You're not going to double him up on a bouncer like that. So he trades places with Narvaez. And that'll bring up Derek Holland. So they're going to go to their bench. They're going to go to their bench right now. Yep. That's going to be Matt Davidson. It's one Manaya out in the bullpen. For the White Sox. Davidson not in the starting lineup tonight. He's just five for his last 39. 247, but he has 18 home runs. Well, it's been a rough stretch for Derek Holland. It did not get any better tonight for him. It's been a rough stretch over the last month and a half for the White Sox rotation period. Davidson swings and misses 0 and 1. Kind of the book on Davidson is with all the home runs that he hits. He likes the ball inside doesn't like it away from him on the outside pitches and it has been a rough go for that man right there in Derek Holland. Matt Davidson doubting the power that he has. Right, you got to go back to Abreu when he was a rookie in 2014. He had 29 home runs, most by a White Sox player at the All Star break. One and two on Davidson. I appreciate Matt Davidson's story as he's kind of put himself on the map. Talk about two years 
in 2014, 2015, this was a, a top pick for the Diamondbacks. He's hitting 200 over for two years, a span of two years in the minor leagues. He swings and misses, so he strikes out as a pinch hitter to end the fifth inning. Four strikeouts for Marquez. Rockies up 7 1. Here's our Central League High Speed Challenge question. Go to at Root Sports underscore RM to cast your vote. We, yeah, we had to run this one out there. Interleague play. Do you like the DH? Pretty simple. Huey, you played uh, with National League teams. You played with American League teams. What do you have? I don't like the designated hitter rule. Good. I you and I can continue we, to be friends. Exactly, and that's why I said it. No, I say it because I think the strategy involved in the National League is is so much better. The, the, the double switches and when you're going to pinch hit and when you're not, do you let them go that extra inning? In the American League, you just decide when you're going to take your pitcher out once you set the lineup. Uh, I'm with you. Fouled off by Mark Reynolds. Billy, what do you have? I'm a National League player. I, I don't have my career if I did if I didn't play in the National League. But I do appreciate the DH. I do like watching good hitters hit. I'd rather watch a hitter hit over a pitcher. I just don't want to see the rule switch. I like it okay, that okay, it's American on, League, oh, oh, and I like the National. Can I interrupt you just for one moment, really uh -uh, quickly? Nope. Okay. <laughs> never mind. See ya. <laughs> we watched the pitchers hit tonight. They're collective two for three. Holland had one at bat. He had a base hit. Marquez has a double and, and a ground out. Yeah, but I loved watching Edgar Martinez. I love watching David Ortiz. I like watching those guys hit. They couldn't have played in the National League style. I, I do from a player standpoint, I understand that. I, I just from a strategy place, I much prefer the chess game that is National League Baseball. And if you talk to managers like Buddy Black, and guys even that had experience in both leagues they much prefer the National League but I'm glad the DH is in the American League I don't want to see one league I, I, I don't know well, that if was I've ever articulated this I don't want to see one one set of rules I like the contrast yes so I'm, I'm glad that the American League plays with the DH rule I don't want to see it in the National League but I don't want to see the American League go to a no DH situation, which will never happen. Players you never allow that to happen. Mark and Reynolds I, strikes not, out. And honestly, I'm kind of changing my tune on that too, because originally I was like, no way, it should be the same set of rules. We're the only sport that has different sets of rules within it. But what do we got here? Looks like the trainer and Rick Renteria are coming well, out to Juan check. Juan Benaya just came into the ball game.
Shy has been throwing the ball really well for the White Sox of late. Yeah, I didn't pick up anything on the five pitches that he threw to Mark Reynolds. Looks like it's all a go for and the interesting Manaya. thing. How many times do you see the trainer come out and the pitcher not have to throw at least one pitch to satisfy the manager? Right. There's also stories behind the scenes that we don't get to see. It might not have been something that just happened immediately. It might be a, a nagging injury that the training staff knows about. They might have saw him grimace, come out there, make sure it doesn't affect him anymore. I mean, you know how that stuff is. Yep. Yeah, it probably was something like that since they didn't have to throw a, a pitch. And Para makes that pitch. It's 0-1. Gerardo first game back missed a month. Rockies were very careful with that strain quad before sending him out on a rehab assignment. They took another magnet, magnetic image of it at MRI. This ball's in the air to left center field pretty well hit and it is off the wall and grabbed by Cabrera. And it's a double for Parra. That ball really carried Spilly. Off the bat, I thought it was a fly ball to fairly deep left field. It would be caught. The ball is carrying tonight, but these balls have also been squared up. Charlie's ball was crushed. DJ's ball was crushed. And Gerardo off the bat. There was that loud pop. You can always hear it when you get good wood. Gerardo gets good wood. It's behind the baseball. He just brings an element back to this Rockies lineup that was missing. That quality at bat that you can count on. And the numbers bear it out. I said it earlier, it's, bare, it's worth repeating. It was 22 and 14 when Gerardo started. The Rockies were just 13 and 15 when he was out on the DL. I had a number earlier, and it was from April until June the 6th. The Rockies are scoring about 5.3 runs per game. And from the time that Gerardo went on the disabled list, June 7th to now, it dropped down to 4.7. That's a pretty significant drop. And let's be honest, with the struggles of Carlos Gonzalez, the struggles of Trevor Story, Ian Desmond's on the DL right now. The Rockies really have missed what he has provided, Gerardo Parra. And not only hitting against right-handers, but against left-handers as well. I think that's what he gives you, especially this year. Last year was an up and down year for him. It hurt a lot with the ankle. Even when he came back, he wasn't healthy. But he was determined in spring training. And you could see it. There was, there was, you know, I'm not going down quietly kind of confidence from Gerardo. Two run single for Story in the first. He's got a 2 0 pitch coming from Manaya. It's fouled off and out of play. Boys, I'll ask this again on Sunday, but I'm thinking about it. For you guys, was it more important during the break from a physical standpoint or a mental standpoint? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, you needed that break physically, but also mentally to, to know that I don't have to worry even a, a, a day from now that I need to, to think about a pitcher. Because when you get a day off, you break away, but you're still thinking about tomorrow. And with the All-Star break, you still have those three or four days before you. All you're thinking about once the break starts is, I've got to be on the plane so we can go have that workout in New York on Thursday. That's what you're thinking about. Or I'm going to meet the club in New York. 
and, and so from that end, it's great to have those three or four days. And you talked about it, that extra day off that they, they put into the schedule now. And the workout in New York for the Rockies, the foul ball, is an optional one. But and I said arrive early from different parts of the country. You know, they can choose to go to City Field and work out. And what they also do, too, then, is on Friday, it, it, providing the Mets don't have anything fancy going on, the, sometimes they'll have early batting practice on that day, too. So if you weren't able to make it or you didn't make it on Thursday, you can get some early work, get, get the blood going, get back in the baseball line on Friday before regular batting practice. And there's actually... Is that a foul ball? No. Nope. the out at first on Story. Two outs and moving up is Para. They're going to have a workout on Thursday here in Denver at Coors Field okay. before the team flies early afternoon. Renneria is going to go to the lefty here for Tapia. He's going to bring in David Holmberg. Colorado leading 7 to 1. We're in the middle innings at Coors Field, first to three. Rockies and White Sox. game on the screen or you can just peek out like they do at Wrigley and watch the uh, game from afar. David Holmberg is on soft toss and lefty specialist as he will face Rymel Tapia two outs and Gerardo Parr is at third base. A lot of breaking stuff with this kid. And, and as you mentioned not hard the, the changeup will be 82 curveball about 73 slider at 80 miles an hour. There you go right out of the gate. And off speed, even his fastball is about five miles below the major league average at 88 miles an hour. Tapia hit one off the right field wall in the third. Two out double stranded there. And this is lobbed into shallow right for a base hit in an RBI. Okay. Just when you get the ball in play, good things happen. That's right. Cut down on the strikeouts, put it in play, and you add on another run. Eight okay, to this, one. This is the offense that I've been kind of waiting here now for the last month or so to show up. Slider reaches for it off the end of the bat, just making contact for Taft, and he drives in his eighth run of the season. What do we ask for at the top of the broadcast? A laugher. And I said it's, you know, it's got to be one of those 12-run, 15-hit, 
three home runs, six double deals, right? Yeah. The Rockies have hit a couple home runs, have they not? Yes. They have three doubles. Yes. They have eight runs. They're on and, their way. And I'll give you another one, too. They're hitting 500 with runners in scoring position, where the last 15 games it was just 216. Here's Walters. But Spilly, it's, it's about the slugging portion that has been absent for the Rockies. Just 10th in home runs in the National League in a year where pitchers are complaining the ball's wound too tight because there's been so many home runs. They're on a record pace. Yet the Rockies, a team that you would think would be near the top of the class, they're in the lower third. So this is really good to see tonight. I think when you look at this team, you're right. This is a team that, as far as slugging, they've underperformed. And if you look at their their advanced metrics, they're near the bottom. But what they still can do, and what we have seen today, the most important, you, home runs come in bunches, is you can still take your walks. That'll end the inning. The Rockies get another run on that top of your base hit. They're up eight to one as we go to the sixth. Sixth inning, Chad Bettis is very close to returning to Major League Baseball today through another live session. 30 pitches, felt great. You talk about him being able to catch his breath. That was one of the things that he mentioned is his ability to just have energy. And today he had energy. He's going to throw one more side session on Sunday. And Bud Black said today on Thursday the 13th, Chad Bettis will head to Hartford, double A, and throw two innings, 30 pitches. Great news, great hearing from Chad. Uh, I know Bud was saying that this road to recovery, he's taking this like just trying to get back to his job. He's a baseball player, he wants to pitch. He's looking at this no longer as a treatment over cancer. He's looking at it as becoming a baseball player again. Yeah, it's, it's just so exciting. First, the human side of you is so tremendously elated for Chad and his young family. Then the baseball side, let's not forget, Chad's 14-game winner from last year. It's a really good pitcher that the Rockies are going to be getting back. Well, and what he did in the second half last year, too. I mean, he was... Seven and two with a low ERA over his final, uh, basically, half a season. Exactly. So it's like making a trade for somebody when you didn't have to. That's right. So he, he's coming back. But just uh, talking to him after the after his BP today and what it was like to smile once again on his face. My favorite part of his live BP session, the very first one he had, the last pitch he threw to Pat Valeka was a home run to center field. 
easy play for DJ. Not that easy because no, this guy was can flying. Run. But in the last at bat, Valenka and Bettis went toe to toe. And Bettis got the better of Valenka, striking him out. And after, when he popped off the mound, he said something. It was kind of like a yeah. And Bud Black loved it, high fived him. Chad loved it. And he said, after, we're evened up. I got him with the punch. He deserved a punch. He hasn't had a punch <laughs> out in a while. And after Valenka got him, you know, it's payback, teammate. That's a competitor in you. That's why he's been able to do what he's done off the field. Why he's going to be returning in the not too distant future. Melky Cabrera, a single in the fourth, a strikeout as well. One and one count. How about Marquez? He's been overshadowed by the offense, the much needed offense for the Rockies. Marquez has thrown 66 pitches, only 17 out of the zone. 50 strikes now. 17 balls. I mean, that is outstanding. And a low pitch count, Huey, in the sixth inning with one out. And to have the 8-1 lead for him, too. That, that helps him. He, he can relax. He can go out there. He's made adjustments when he's missed. So it's not three or four misses in a row. If it's a miss, and he comes back immediately with the strike. I mean, when you're talking about a 50-strike ratio out of 68 total pitches that you threw, just missed and Marquez like so many young pitchers when they get hit or have a subpar outing it is almost always attributable to poor fastball command he's had great fastball command tonight Nolan veering far to his left throws out Cabrera they're two outs and that'll bring up Jose Abreu Marvel superhero night of Coors Field is tomorrow night to purchase a special ticket package and receive a Marvel superhero themed Rockies t-shirt. What do you got, right. Huey? So I, I've got it. I've got it right here. All right. So this is what you get. It's a superhero night at the ballpark to, tomorrow night. First 10,000 fans at the gate. Now, if you bought a ticket but you'd like to upgrade, you could do that. Go to rockies.com slash superhero. And, and you can kind of do it that way, too, if you've already bought a ticket. But you don't want to miss out on the shirt. No, you want to know why? Why? What's it's really soft. It is. It's soft. It's soft. I've got, you know what, i got two. One for you, one for me. Sorry, Spilly. That's You're okay. You're out of luck, pal. It's all right. I have one in my closet. I got a cake. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Spilly, can you get one for your friend? <laughs> Who, this guy? Yeah, that guy. He doesn't want one. Yeah, like he said, he's got a cape too. Can we point out again that this is twice in the last week or so where we're going we're gonna to let you behind the curtain a little bit. This is really top secret stuff. But we usually get a um, before a series starts and it's going to be really warm. That's when we wear the polo shirts. <laughs> and whether it's Allison B. Hill or Tavis Strand, our two producers, Tavis is usually in charge of this. He does the majority of the games. All right, get to it. Let's go. He says that okay on Friday you guys wear the the dark gray. Yeah. No, 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 no. On it does Saturday not say you dark. wear black. It did not, it did on not Sunday say. you wear purple. Well, this is twice now in the because we have two different grays, so the darker gray and the, the lighter gray that Spilly who messed up is wearing. Twice now in what time? You days? got it right. I got it right. Yeah. yeah. This is dumped into right field, a base hit for Gray, the second of the night. So let me just clarify something. So for this T-shirt, you, you have to have a special ticket to get it, okay? Well, I was on, I was already on the spilling, messing up the shirt. No, I know. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows because you got to buy a special ticket for the T-shirt package, okay? So I didn't want you to just think, well, if you just showed up tomorrow, I mean, you will. You'll get this one. I feel really fortunate. I yeah, get I one. I get one. I didn't buy the special ticket. No, but they, but even if you bought a ticket, then you can you can change it if you need to. Oh, I see. Okay, so you that's have that what option. I'm saying. So you have that option. There's a strike at the knees to Todd Frazier. A uh, spilly very quickly as we close the book on the um, on the polo shirt caper. <laughs> Crickets from you. Gray's gray. That's that's. <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing gray. I mean, it would have been better if I wore purple. You get to wear purple on Sunday. Black tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. 
if, if <laughs> oh, somebody, twi everybody, I want you to hit your Twitter account, actually hit Spilly's Twitter account, and remind him black tomorrow, purple, purple on Sunday. Sunday. Unbelievable. That is strike three, and Tony Walters will finish the play at first to Mark Reynolds. Marquez has five strikeouts. Marquez has been outstanding. Eight to one, Colorado. The offense not too shabby either tonight. Unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. Well, the Cleveland Indians, Terry Francona, underwent a procedure Thursday for an irregular heartbeat. Will not manage the American League in Tuesday's All-Star game. And he's planning on rejoining uh, the club for the start of the second half. Brad Mills, his bench coach, will handle uh, managerial duties down in Miami and to one of... Uh, the real, real good guys in baseball. We wish uh, Tito a very speedy recovery. And I hope that it clears everything up for him because last two or three weeks it's been off and on. He's missed some games. Did Tito ever self deprecating humor, trying to play it off. No, it's serious, serious health issue that you want to take care of. It's back up the middle. You just can't slow down Herman Marquez. Well, that's, that's a two-hit ball game. That's why you want pitchers hitting. I didn't just say that, really, did I? You did. You did. Come on. It's on the record. Billy, you know. And yeah, watch the hitters. Break right down the swing. Well, you I'm eat. just trying to watch this. Oh, he does kind of go down. Had to take the top hand off the bat on the Subaru Super Mode. It grabs some extra length. Oh, yeah. And then you can see David Holmberg. Look off in disgust. Here's Blackman, a walk, a fly ball to the wall at center, and then he said, I'm going over the wall next time, which he did in the fourth to right field. It was his 19th home run of the year, his 60th RBI. The stats will be uh, in neon lights Monday and Tuesday out in Miami. Time for our Miko big hit. And let's go back to the fourth inning. Charlie got a pitch out over the plate, a breaking ball. And he did not miss it against Derek Holland. Line shot just over the auxiliary scoreboard. 29 home runs last year. Already 19 before the All Star break for Chuck Nasty. You know, I was talking to Charlie yesterday, and I said, you know, is there anybody you really want to, you know, meet at the All-Star game or visit with that you've never had an opportunity? And after, you know, the normal Charlie line of that. <laughs> right. No. 
you know, they're the enemy, that kind of thing. He was kidding, obviously. But in, in all seriousness, he said, I'm looking forward to talking to Joey Votto. And when, we were, when I was on base, I told him that next week I'd like to pick his brain about a couple of things. That's the cool thing about being able to go to an all-star game. It's yeah, a lot of pomp and circumstance and, and, and the honor that goes along with it. But then to talk to other players, one of the, we, you know, we one, saw it during the WBC too. Yeah, and one of the things he wants to talk to him about, and I want to hear you know both you and Spilly sound off on this. He was amazed that a couple of ball games ago, Votto swung 3-0 earlier in the ball game, and you know he's a big, you know big time hitter. Not that he swung 3-0, but he swung 3-0 earlier in the ball game, and he rolled over, which he, right, which is you know a, a, a rough feeling for a hitter because they're on the cusp of reaching and they're like oh man swung at the 3-0 pitch at the green light but I rolled over later in the game he still had the same confidence 3-0 to fire at a 3-0 pitch and he hit a home run to deep center field and he fascinated Charlie who is a thinking man's player and that's one of the topics he wants to discuss with him you know what that tells me it tells me for Joey Votto that he's able to separate at bats if most guys would be say, oh man, I, can, I rolled over 4 3 last time, 3 0. Oh, should I swing again? Joey said, that's in the past. I got 3 0, I'm hunting that fastball. That's what it tells me about Joey Bach. Yeah, what do you have on it, Spilly? Swinging 3 0? I love it. I, I always want guys to swing 3 0. What's the difference between swinging 3 0 and 0 0? 2 0. It's the same thing. If it's a pitch you can handle and you don't fire, it's a wasted pitch. We're going to get another pitching change. The difference, of course, was that earlier in the game, he didn't produce 3-0, and instead of shying away from it, as, as Huey said, he just moves on to the next at bat. Next opportunity came up. Interesting stuff. 8-1, Colorado leading. Looking for more here in the six. Two on, nobody out. Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Well, the Rockies were in need of a big time offensive performance and hopefully coupled with a great performance on the hill. So far, so good. On a night with the full moon overhead, gorgeous evening in Lodo. And it is pitcher number four for Rick Renneria and the White Sox. This is Chris Beck. Who his first 19 appearances this year, he was really tough to handle. His last six appearances, though, he has been hit around pretty good. His last six appearances, the league's hitting 308 against him. He has an ERA over four. Prior to that, the league was hitting just 143 against the right-hander. A little bit better out on the road than he has been at home. A 2.33 ERA compared to a 4.8 in Chicago. He's a four-pitch mix guy. Which is a little unusual for a guy coming out of the bullpen. He's got a big arm. Here's LeMahieu, two on and nobody out. And the fastball in the mid 90s is high. Ball one. 
DJ's had another big ball game. Single in the first, two run homer in the second. He's among the big league leaders in multi hit games with his closest friend in the sport. We'll show you next. Charlie Blackman leads Major League Baseball with 37 multi hit games, and then DJ, along with the former Rocky and All Star All Marcelo Zuna, are next. All four of those guys, excuse me, all five, because Ender and Ciarte is going to the All Star game. All five will be in Miami. Back to DJ's home run in the second inning, his fourth of the year, to keep the multi hit games for him. Goes down, takes it out to a large portion of this ballpark out to left center field. Got to be strong to hit the ball when it's six, eight inches off the plate as far as he hit. One, two. Fellas, this is a, a good thing what has unfolded in one obvious way, the 8-1 to one lead. But the fact that Holland went only four innings in game one of a three-game set, you've seen it before, that can really and undo a bullpen when you get later in the weekend. You're already on your third pitcher after he left. Now Rick Renteria has been in this division before all those years and he was in San Diego as a first as a first base coach and then it was a bench coach. Uh, uh, so he knows he understands with the day off that helps and he knows he has a day off on the other side with the all star break. But it does it it it'll wear on you and so you know, tomorrow might be a little different for their bullpen the complexion of it but cer most certainly on Sunday. Two and two on LeMayhew. Nolan's on deck. Monkeys have had production up and down their lineup. They have a dozen hits. Three and two. Everybody in the lineup has a knock, with the exception of Reynolds, who's walked and scored. Tony Walters is 0 for 3. Herman Marquez who's standing at second base. He's got a double and a single tonight. Down the line, but it's right out of Brayu. And they're going to turn it over. It's well done by Jose Abreu, not known for his glove. 3 6 3 on the turn. Well, he hit so hard to Abreu, and being back to it gives him a better angle to throw to, to second base. So he just does the spin, and Anderson catches and the relay back to Jose. And you can see where he caught that on the Subaru Supermo, how he caught it to his left. So instead of Pivoting his feet, he went ahead and spun. Okay, if he would have caught it in front, then he go, then he pivot. But off to the left as a as a right-handed first baseman, that's when you spin. Here's Nolan. I want to go back to that all-star conversation that you started with Charlie Blackman wanting to talk to Joey Votto. Nolan says his favorite part of going to All-Star is he will literally sit in the cage the entire time and pick every guy's brain that comes in. His favorite guy to talk to, Paul Goldschmidt. Yeah, they forged a nice relationship playing together also in the WBC. One ball, one strike. That's not really earth shattering news, is it, for uh, you know those of us that are fortunate to watch how he goes about his business day in and day out. I just like the visual of seeing Nolan get to the locker room, put on his shorts and his shoes, and then jump in the batting cage and just wait. And talk to everybody. Here's there. a wild pitch. Marquez thought about coming home. And if 
he were not a pitcher I'm sure he would have scored. But on the on the other side of that coin though is all those guys you know Nolan says he wants to watch all those guys and listen to them. They're doing the same thing to him. Yeah that's right. Okay they're saying wow I want to go watch Nolan hit. I want to go see how he does it. Talk to him. All the guys who make their living on the dirt as infielders they want to go watch <laughs> how he picks the baseball. Two and one on Arnado, RBI single in the first to get the Rockies their initial run. Lined out twice, once to left, once to right. Eight one Colorado. Deep left field. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. Home run number 16 for Arenado. He also gets one extra RBI because Marquez didn't come home on that wild pitch. So now he's got 66 on the year. Ball headed up Route 66. <laughs> Uh, Melky Cabrera in left field. Hardly moved. And no doubt. This is why they're going to be in the cage watching Nolan take swings at the All Star game. You guys are going to wonder and break down his swing. Thing of beauty. That's his first home run since June the 18th. Over his last 22 ball games, Nolan coming into tonight had hit 330 great average he had driven in 17 good stuff but he'd hit only one home run ten one Colorado one hundred and twenty seventh home run all time for Nolan he's one behind Matt Holiday. Rockies home run list. That's over 300 now in his career. And after that, it'd be Andre Scalaraga, the big cat. Not going to get the big cat this year. Be nice if he did, though, huh? <laughs> That'd be a special year. Be a special second half. Two one on Reynolds. What every Rockies fan had on order for tonight's ball game. Need to order up again tomorrow and the next day too. Take, take tonight though. This is wow. Where was that pitch? That's what uh, Mark wants to know. Oh, C.J. Raber. Yeah, it's off the Subaru strike zone. I know the game's ten to one. This was a no doubter. Fastball up in the zone. Arnado did not miss it.
Time to take a look at our Cooney Lexus look back. That's DJ LeMay who poking one out the center field. A two run home run, one of three home runs for the Rockies tonight. Charlie Blackman is 19th, the line shot to right. And moments ago, Nolan Arnato on the high fastball from Beck. And the Rockies have reached double digits. That's our Cooney Lexus look back. They're up 10 to 1. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Ryan Spilports. Tell you a quick story uh, in a moment about Nolan's family. As you see, Alexi Amarista's in at second base. This was planned. If the Rockies had a lead late in the ball game because DJ is nursing that groin injury, Buddy was going to put Alexi in defensively and give some more rest to LeMayhew. And DJ's done a lot of damage. Story. A little help from Reynolds at first. So. Millie Arenado, when she was in high school, was a terrific softball player. She went to high school with a guy who was a really good baseball player. He signed out of high school and went on to a professional career. And then he got into uh, coaching and ultimately became a baseball manager. None other than Rick Renteria. And that is the rest of the story. That is the rest of the story, as the late Paul Harvey would say. Sanchez is retired. That'll bring up the catcher Omar Narvaez. So Millie Arnado, who is a, a fixture on social media today, Rods play Chicago White Sox, and my former high school classmate and friend, manager Rick Renteria. It's a small world after all. And Rick kind of expounded on that and expanded when he said that. You know, when he was coaching down in, in San Diego, got a look at Nolan for the first time down there and kind of flashed back to, you know, high school because he'd been gone for so long. The kind of things happened, but he had heard about Nolan, but they didn't have the chance to see him play until he made it to the big leagues. Now he's tired of seeing him play. That's <laughs> on the outside corner, two and two on Narvaez. RBI ground out to drive in the only run back in the second inning for Chicago, and he had a base hit through the right side in the fifth inning. It's out of play. So the Rockies have hit double digits for the first time since. They scored 10 at Wrigley Field in Chicago on June 16th. They have scored, folks, in every inning with the exception of the third. The third, too. They had a runner in scoring position, but Tapia, who had hit the double over the right fielder's head. Starts with that four spot in the first. And I'll start with a leadoff walk to Charlie. That's how that you know, this game started for the Rockies offensively. Well, this at bat is wasting some pitches for Herman. You're looking at him to go farther into this game. You're looking at pitch number eight coming up. This is by far the longest at bat anybody's had against him tonight. All right, now it's annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. Well, DJ Rayburn was telling him that's annoying. Yeah, all over the Subaru strike zone, everywhere there. Pitch number 10 upcoming. This one's playable in left center field. Gerardo Parr is out there, and that's the second out. Fans, tomorrow the Rockies Wives annual charity basket event is coming up. Bid on baskets with the players' favorite things, including unique gifts and autographed items. A reminder, that's tomorrow against the White Sox. 
Here's Adam Engel, a fly ball to left and a strikeout for Engel. New sports star growing up in Cincinnati. Football, basketball, baseball. Big strong dude, 6'2, about 215. Did he go to Moeller in Cincinnati? He did not go to Moeller. Right? Does it, it doesn't yeah, seem like well, everybody that there's Cole Rain, there's St. X, there's so many good schools in the Catholic League in, in Cincinnati. Engel went to Huey. Yeah. Loveland High School. Okay. Don't know anything about no, it. No, I know. That's right. Heard of the other ones that you mentioned? Everybody knows about Bowler. I have not heard of. You said Loveland. You went to Loveland okay. High School. <laughs> not to be confused with the Loveland High School in Colorado. In Colorado, coached by former big leaguer Greg Brock. And University of Wyoming, Greg Brock. And University of Wyoming, Greg Brock. Marquez, and this goes down the right field line. That's, that was going to be a hit any foul for Engel, and now he'll go to second on the throwing error by Marquez. Be Herman's first air of the year. Oh, just a swinging bunt. It's over. It takes a little bit of time to get rid of it, and then just pulls Mark too far inside. Mark's trying to reach and stay on the bag, do everything he can. If you're a scout, Billy, and you watch Engel. Run. He was a 19th round pick out of Louisville. He was an all Big East player. But that's really going to jump out at, for a scout watching this kid. That's the hardest part for scouts is when you're watching the tools of an athlete, you see certain tools like what Angle has, the ability to run. That's hard to find. And the other thing, you know, we're a strong athletic looking body. It reminds me. Physically, uh, of Eric Burns. Yeah. Before Eric started doing ultra marathons, right? Yeah, before he, and getting bad haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> Hope Burns is looking in tonight. <laughs> Anderson fouls it off, one and one. You know what Eric needs? You, you don't like the hairdo. I'm okay with the hairdo. He just needs a little more energy. When we see him. Right, he's so he passive. Just, he, he, exactly. He just needs a little shot of adrenaline to get himself going. Anderson with a 1 1 count. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Two outs, single at second. Rocky's up 10 to 1 in the seventh. There is a great documentary that Eric Burns uh, put together this last year called Diamond in the Rough. It, it follows him uh, coming from a baseball to the lead out. High drive, deep center field. Anderson clicks this one, and it's gone. A two-run home run for Anderson, his eighth of the year, and it's 10 to three. This is his second home run in the last 32 games for Tim Anderson. Oh, he gets one away where he can extend the arms. Well, you understand why he was a first round pick. Sure. Because that's uncommon power for a guy that plays in the middle of the diamond. Oh, and he's got a strong arm. You know, he's made a ton of errors, 19 of them. Spilly, finish uh, what you were saying about Burns. So there's a movie that he was a part of called Diamond in the Rough, and it, it follows him turning in from a baseball player, retired baseball player, and finding endurance athletics, right? He tries an Ironman, and then he tries this run. It's a 100-mile marathon, and it kind of chronic chronicles his training and then some of his training partners. It it's worth watching just because we know him, and it is weird watching a former major leaguer transform himself from an aerobic to anaerobic-type athlete. Where is that again? 
Uh, maybe Netflix. Okay, I'll send a link out. Maybe the greatest ultra marathon is the Leadville 100. This is on the ground through the left side. It's a base hit for the pinch hitter Willie Garcia. Adam Adovino just got up, but you'd really like for Marquez just to finish this game. Get this last out here in the next pitch or two. So you can go seven innings. You've just been nicked for the, the, the three run two just have come within the last three batters. But finish it off now. And he will on a line drive. No, he's got to get the out of first. Amarista to first, and that will end the inning. Two run home run from Tim Anderson. Middle of seven, the Rockies up 10 to three. Rockies Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Say yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by the Wyoming Office of Tourism, Wyoming is full of adventure. It's time to find out if you are too. That's why travelwyoming.com. Nice. A little T work. And that's where I hit it. It stayed in the middle. It was that's good. He stayed in the middle of the field. Oh. He's not getting cheated. No, he's got some bat speed. Yes, he does. Herman Marquez, touch for a two-run home run last inning, but overall tonight, it was a very fine performance for Herman. He's going to be done, I'm sure, after seven innings. He's had uh, one outing that went longer this year. He went eight innings back on May 10th at home against the Cubs, a 3 to nothing win, in which he allowed only three hits, struck out eight, and walked one. Here's Gerardo Parra in the seventh inning against Dan Jennings. Willie Garcia, who just had a pinch single, will stay in the ball game in right field. Alan Hansen is now out of the ball game. Rockies have seen Dan Jennings before when he was with Miami. So has a lot of the American League with the 40 games. That's tied for fourth in the American League. Lefties are hitting 167 against him. Right, he's 275, but Gerardo coming through again tonight. This is this is the bat that you've missed for a while. We set it off the top, and more importantly than us saying it, during his pregame meeting with the media, Buddy Black said, listen, we're, we're thrilled to have Gerardo Bach back. He's going to hopefully give us a jolt offensively, and he's done exactly that with three hits tonight. A double. He has an RBI. 
It's just nice when you've missed a, almost a month to come back. You took your three rehab games and you jump back in with both feet like you didn't miss anything. Trevor Story, two run single in the first, couple of strikeouts after that. Slider for a strike. Here's exactly what Buddy had to say about the return of Parra. You know, let's hope that uh, Gerardo can give us a little lift. You know, he was swinging about really well, as you know, before, uh, you know, the injury. But, you know, when he's right, he can do a lot of things. You know, he can, he can get the ball over the fence, he can get in the gap, uh, he sprays the ball around the field. Uh, you know, I think he likes hitting with guys on base. Uh, you know, he's got some energy, which is great uh, personality. So it's great to have him back. It's like a lot of these Rockies, Spill, Spilly, he likes to play. That's what you want. You want guys in the lineup that play every day. And it, it brings some stability to your lineup when you have those type of players. And I, I think we have to tip your cap to what Gerardo has been able to do. Last year was a terrible year. You look at the numbers, they're, they're not good. He was hurt. He played hurt. But the numbers going into the season, he wasn't expected to play. Got himself in great shape. The opportunity presented itself, and he's run with it. I think that's the point, too. Spilly is going into spring training. Everything was David Dahl, David Dahl, and rightfully so after the year he had. But Gerardo, for his career, has been a very, very solid major league player. So I'm sure he was a. Well, don't forget about me, folks. I, I'm still here. I'm still a part of this team. Second baseman. And Sanchez will turn the double play. Two outs, and that'll bring up Tapia. Mel's got a couple of hits tonight. Double and a single. Single in the fifth, drove in a run. Eighth ribby for Tapia. 10 3 Colorado, bottom of the seventh. No we way. got off at the wrong airport. That, that's that got to be a joke, right? They're trying to go to Houston, watch an Astros game? <laughs> Who's your, who, is your, who is your pilot? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they, bad, it's probably, bad it's probably a layover. Yeah, no, it's probably a layover. And uh, they probably had to stay on the plane and maybe they were sleeping in the flight. I mean, I'm just gonna make up a whole story. No, I think the son said, you know what, Dad? I really want to watch the Rockies. Today. I want to be outside where it's nice, a beautiful evening. So this is a true quick true story. And um, it, my my Chris, my wife's grandmother, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, sweet, sweet lady. She was flying out from New York through Houston to Denver. And she called up and she said, where are you guys? I thought she was sweet, really, I mean, beautiful. She said, where are you guys? I thought you were meeting me at the gate. And we said, well, you know, Grammy, you, we, we don't see you, we're at the gate. Where are you? She says, I don't know, I'm at the gate, I'm waiting for you. She's been waiting like for two hours. She got off Intercontinental in Houston. Plane landed, she got off. Forgot about, the, forgot about the, she was staying on for the next lap. This is fisted to third. Frazier's got it, and Tapia is out. Rockies had a hit, nothing else across in the seventh. We move to inning number eight. In front of those two Houston Astro fans, the Rockies leading 10 to 3.
Check our Kubota pitching performance. The work of Herman Marquez, 22-year-old, seven innings of three-run baseball. It was uh, outstanding. Rockies provide the big lead for him, and he pounded the strike zone. Of uh, the 102 pitches, he threw 73 for strikes. He was 19 for 29 first pitch strikes, 10 ground ball outs, five fly outs, five strikeouts as we see. He got the one out on the bases. Those 102 pitches, that is a career high for Herman. Now for the Rockies is Adam Adovino, still trying to erase the memory of that last outing that he had. Against Cincinnati, one inning, couple hits, three earned runs. We talked about the some of the hitters, you know, cargo to get going. Trevor, Rockies need Adam Adovino to get going. They need a couple guys to get going in the second half. This is not you know, giving away secrets here. Adam Adovino's got to get going. Mike Dunn, again, he'd be the first to tell you that he's got to take command of his slider. They need to be plus side guys again, protecting leads in the seventh and eighth inning for Buddy Black. Obviously, Jake McGee's had a really solid first half, and Greg Holland's an all-star. The Rockies need, from a pitching standpoint in their bullpen, you know, these two guys to pitch like we've seen them Remember, pitch frequently in the past. Yeah, and early in the season, where it had, you had the lead after six inning, it was over. You know, depending on how Bud wanted to do it. Whether it was Otto in the seventh and Mike in the eighth, or vice versa, and Greg Holland in the ninth. But as you say, as we're finishing up game number 89 tonight, you know, there's 71 games, 72 games left. Yep. You know, and we've talked a lot about, you know, the Rockies' offense underperforming collectively this year. Tonight's been great. And hopefully it's a precursor of what's to come not only over the weekend, but in the second half. Jose Abreu has had a good night. Double, single, and three trips. Sliders inside. Talked to three different people today. Four including you, because you mentioned this. And, and, I, and I think I've mentioned it with you and with Spilly on the air recently. And the three other people I were talking to were one, one's a scout, another guy's a former uh, professional baseball player, and they all said the same thing. They said, if you told Rockies fans back in March that around the All Star break you're going to be, you know, 12, 13 games above 500, would you take it? And I, every Rockies fan would say, absolutely. Right. The reason it feels strange is that the Rockies were so darn good for two and a half months, 21 games above 500, that with the last two and a half weeks, you're like, oh my goodness, what's wrong? This could be a tough play. No play, and Abreu's got his third hit. That just stinks. And, but you still look at it, as you say, you're 50 and 38. One of five teams in the major leagues right now that has 50 wins. You've also played this. You're tied for the second most road games played with the same White Sox. Only the Giants have played more. And, and here, as you look at the West and the Dodgers, I was watching that game last night. They're oh, down yeah. four to one, going to the bottom of the ninth. So Arizona's going to salvage one. And a guy who's been really good of late just absolutely melted down in the ninth inning. That is double play ball. There's one. Fernando Rodney gave up a base hit to Puig, and then three straight walks, a base hit by Seeger, and, and then Chris Taylor a walk off, and you're like, what happened? That's how good the Dodgers have been. More on the Rockies when we come back. 10-3, they're up.
bottom of the eighth inning. We found the lost passengers. It's Dwayne, it's Riley. How did you guys end up here? Did you miss a flight? Well, we missed a flight, you know, trying to get back to Houston, but I mean, I'd rather miss a flight and stay in Denver for a little bit and, you know, fly standby. Riley, did you know that the Rockies were playing tonight? Did you say, Dad, I want to watch your Rockies game? Eh, I don't. He's a huge fan of the Rockies. <laughs> no, this, this, is, this is really awesome. I mean, 70 degree weather and 30% humidity, we don't ever get that in Houston. I know, it's a lot better here, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, the Astros have a better record. But Not by much. The Rockies, too. So, I, World Series, watch. And I'll come here and I'll go to Houston for the games too. There you go. So we found them. They did miss the flight. We're happy they're here. Uh, we're happy they get to watch National League Baseball. You guys like National League Baseball? Well, I mean, we were the National League. Not know, well, not anymore, but I mean, the only thing I like is not watching pitchers hit. But your pitcher here got two hits today, so that's even better, right? We need, we need him, you know, on our team too. All right, guys, back to you. They like pitchers hitting. It's great. Yeah. Well, listen. We will welcome um, those Houston fans that are proudly adorned in Astros paraphernalia, and their club is 30 games above 500. They have the best record in all of baseball, half game better than the Dodgers right now. And guess what? He's letting his wife know we were on TV. Glad they could. Uh, they're doing That's a little right. scouting. You know what? But it, it's fun when you go. When you go to another ballpark with your son. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, you're, I mean, he's and Astros. okay. So he's like, go Astros, we'll go Rockies. And I, you know what? You know what I love Mainly, about Rockies you know fans? I, they're going to treat them great. Yeah, they will. But I also like what he's saying. I'm just getting a preview of the World Series. There you go. I'm down with that. There you absolutely. Papaleka is going to pinch hit for Adam Adovino with one out in the eighth inning against Dan Jennings. Second inning of work for Jennings. This way, Huey make a play. Now it's above us, pal. Well, the Rockies and Hard Rock Cafe are excited to bring four more Saturday shows to the rooftop. The next concert is tomorrow night. Featuring SF1. Go to Rockies.com slash rooftop for more information. Little cutter and it's 0-2 on Palenka. Long day for Pat. Came out for the early batting practice against Chad Bettis. It started around 2.30 this afternoon. Now here we are, it's 9.30 at night, getting some cuts in against Jennings. Well, when you're an extra player, especially a young extra player, anytime there's early batting practice, you're going to be, that's mandatory for yeah, you. Yeah, it's not optional. No, I mean, it may say optional, but you're going to stick out like a sore thumb if you're not there. If there's a sim game, you're going to be there. They say that the machine needs practice. You'll be there. You'll be there. <laughs> Extra ground balls, you're there. there. On days that there's not early batting practice, you'll be one of the first to the yard. Two and two. It's been great off the bench. He's been terrific when. He's been asked to start. Six home runs. He's driven in 17 and 102 at bats. When you think about that. He's hitting a home That's run hard. every about 17 at bats. Got a home run to center, right center the other night. Two two on Patty Barrels and a called strike three. Two gone in the eighth inning and that'll bring up Blackman and Charlie's had another well typical Charlie Blackman evening. 
A walk and a run scored in the first when the Rockies got four. He hit a ball to the wall in center in the second. In the fourth inning, he did this against Derek Collin. 19 home runs, 60th RBI with that. And then he threw out a base hit to center field in the sixth. Visiting earlier with the uh, longtime broadcaster Steve Stone. He's a heck of a major league pitcher, also. And we're telling him Blackman, the score could be 100 to nothing either way, and he will not give an at bat away. It's a little bit like the Rockies, who the Rockies just saw with Joey Votto, Cincinnati. I mean, they. That's why Charlie wants to talk to him. That's why he wants to see it because they're similar guys. Yep. Very cerebral players and very cerebral about how they go about preparing to play each night. Jennings, one of those guys, Huey, that and you were a left handed hitter. You know he, he's slow, and then all of a sudden it, it's pretty quick to the plate. And that's you, you hard gotta, to time. You got to get ready to hit in a different manner, don't you? Because watch how quick he brings his leg up. Everything's slow. Right now it's a quick. There he goes. So the timing mechanism throws you off. Charlie's got 113 hits. It's the most by a Rocky before the All-Star break since Matt Holiday in 2007 had 122 hits in the first half. And this is slowly hit to short. Anderson throws it away. Let's see how they score that. I think if it's a clean throw, then He's Charlie's out. out which means it would be the 20th error on Anderson. The first Jennings whiffs on this. He didn't jump for it. He just reaches for it with his glove, stays on the ground, and then that's not even close. Look at that. He doesn't get very high off the ground for Jennings. But good news for Charlie, it will be a base hit. So Charlie with his third hit, fourth time he's reached tonight. That'll bring up Alexi Amarista for the first time. Came in a couple of innings ago defensively for DJ LeMay. DJ's fine, I'm sure, just uh, getting a little rest with that groin injury. DJ tonight, I'll tell you how fine he is. Single and a run scored in the first. Two run home run to extreme left center field. In the second, ended up two for four. 41 driven in now for LeMayhew, the former LSU star. One strike on Amarista. Good move by Charlie, not advancing on the ball in the dirt. It's 10 to three, two outs in the eighth. Looks like it's going to be Antonio Sensatella handling the ninth inning. One and two. Dodgers are home against the resurgent Kansas City Royals tonight. They're scoreless in the fourth. That is a base hit for Alexi. And two on for Nolan. Rockies just pounded the baseball tonight. Ninja coming through. 
Down a couple strikes. A solid line drive right back up the middle. Rick Retria will go to his fifth reliever tonight. It's going to be his closer, David Robertson, getting a little work. Hits for the Rockies as they lead the White Sox 10 to 3. The first 10,000 fans tomorrow through the gates will receive a Marvel superhero bobblehead courtesy of King Supers. Remember, first 10,000 fans. David Robertson making an appearance tonight. Might be wondering why if he's their closer. He has 12 saves on the season. Well, he was just reinstated from the paternity list today. As he and his wife welcome their second child, daughter Violet Grace, on Monday. So he's just trying to get back into the, the flow of a little baseball after taking care of his wife and his newborn. So Nolan, who in his last at bat, hit one close to the concourse and left for his 16th of the year. He's driven in three tonight. Two outs, two on. Here's Nolan in the sixth inning. Uh, no doubt. Trying to count the rows when this thing originally happened. And this might give us a better look. Four rows from the top. I'll go with four. That's about right. 0 and 1. And that's line to left center field. It's going to drive in another run. And it's going to go close to the wall. It's going to drive in two. Here comes Amarista. How about a five ribby night for the Rockies all star third baseman? What did we say at the top of the broadcast? The Rockies need a laugher. And they're getting it now. Was going to get one RBI off this swing. Drive in Charlie. But then once it gets by Cabrera, can't reach it. He goes to center field and tries to cut it off. He does. He had to slide, but Lexi scoring all the way from first. 28th double of the season for Nolan. Checking on what Jake Lamb's done tonight, Paul Goldschmidt, Marcel Azuna. The reason I say that is. With the five ribbies tonight, Nolan, who's led the league in RBIs each of the last two years, has 68, which, again, depending on what they've done, would lead the National League. Arizona trying to bounce back after that gut-wrenching loss last night, leading at home 4 to nothing against the Reds. Mark Reynolds, 0 for 3, and a walk scored back in the first inning.
David Robertson is one of several White Sox players that are going to draw a lot of interest in the next few weeks leading up to the trade deadline. Oh, he's he's a piece you would want to look hard at because he's done it in the bright lights in the big city of New York. He's been on that big stage. He's got the stuff to close. All of the, the boxes that you want to check for, for an arm of your bullpen, yep. he has it. And ultimately it comes down to what are the offers? And how much do you have to give up to get a guy like Robertson? And that kicks away. It'll be a wild pitch. Nolan almost reluctantly with the score 12 to 3. He didn't, he the didn't third. want to, but he had to. He was obligated yeah. at that point. You almost you show up the team the other if, way if, if you, you don't, don't do it. it. Just looking in the American League with, with, with Aaron Judge of the Yankees. He has one RBI tonight, so he has 66. He may lead all of baseball when he wakes now up the tomorrow Yankees morning. The game's not quite over yet. They're trailing 9 to 4 in the bottom of the eighth. They've had some rain. And a walk for the guy who leads the Rockies in walks, Mark Reynolds. Paul Goldschmidt has driven one in tonight, so Goldschmidt has 67. Lamb has driven any in. He's still at 67. Nolan, fifth time in his career that he's driven in five or more. His career high is seven. Some visits with uh, fellow third baseman Todd Frazier. Been a big night for Gerardo Parra. He's trying to make it even bigger. He's got three hits tonight. Get greedy. Go Why for not? the fourth. Started it off with that infield single. Off the foot of Derek Holland for an RBI. And then against Manaya with a double in the fifth. Jennings base hit in the seventh. This will end the inning. Rockies produce a couple more runs. Big night for Nolan Arenado. Big night for a lot of Rockies. 12 runs, 17. Colorado hits. Looking for three more outs, up 12 to 3 in Coors Field. Easy, right? 
Rockies up 12 to 3. That is much better. Jenny Kavnar, Corey Sullivan with you. We're getting ready for the Toyota post game show. This is the game the Rockies have been waiting for. Put all that angst and energy on the White Sox. There's a little bit of pent up aggression. You only had six guys out of the starting nine that had multiple hit games, That's including it? the starting pitcher, yeah. Herman Marquez. By the way, his hits accounted for four runs. It was enough to beat the White Sox on their own if they don't score here in the ninth. I like that. And I like that he got the team through the seventh as well. We'll finish up the ninth inning. We'll see you right after the baseball game. Drew Huey, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, a lot to talk about, Jenny. Sully, thank you. Antonio Senzatella been working out of the bullpen the last uh, couple of weeks. He'll be asked to get the final three outs this evening. Last time out, back on the second against Arizona, a couple innings, two strikeouts. Remember in that game that he touched 99 a couple times. It's a little air out, right? That's right. He still leads all major league rookies in win with nine and second in innings and, and strikeouts. I think he's seen the last of uh, Antonio's starting games this year, but this slows things down for him. It just pumps the brakes. I think after the All Star break at some point, you'll see him again sooner rather than later. But Black alluded to that today in the press conference. He was talking about, hey, this guy's going to be back in the rotation. He looks good in the bullpen. And it also makes you think about maybe a guy like Herman. Herman who has those innings on if, if maybe that's a route that they would take with him to move him to the bullpen for a start or two. Yeah, I think without question even though he was terrific tonight that will happen also again re reminder that these guys are you know, for the most part 22 years of age and in the case of Sensatella and Marquez a year ago they didn't throw that many innings. Oh, so you don't want to just go from zero to 60 <laughs> in, in one year. So that's why they put the brakes on. They, they limit it. And this is a good way to do it, too, because you also learn something about pitching when you're sitting down in the bullpen. Narvaez, that's five straight out of the strike zone. Coming out of the bullpen for Sensatella, which, which is, is really unusual. Highly for him. unusual. He's a big time strike thrower. More like it. I wanted to point out a stat for you guys tonight as the Rockies end up scoring with that big outburst 12 runs on 17 hits. I have on my paper 11 of the 17 hits coming with two strikes. That's impressive. You used the phrase a, a little while ago. He said that. A lot of boxes were checked when you're talking about David Robertson being a candidate to move to a contender. He's pitched in New York. He's been a closer. He's, he's pitched in big ball games. Well, tonight the Rockies offensively checked a lot of boxes. It's not just listen, 17 hits at a time, 12 runs at a time, but it's the extra base hits that had been the the biggest for me missing link. You talk about hitting with runners in scoring position. That's going to vary, but if you hit a three-run home run and once in a while or a double it's easier to score five or six as opposed to you have nine singles on the evening. Well, that's what they had against the Reds the other day. And that's going to be a base hit. They had ten singles in the game. And, and this club is offensively they, they got guys that have done it before and that's why what well, you keep coming back to but you started to need to see it. I think that's the that's the whole thing. Especially for Bud Black, Dwayne Espy, Jeff Salazar, they put in the work, the guys are doing it. Tonight it showed up. All rookie rotation this weekend for the Rockies against the White Sox. Jeff Hoffman tomorrow, Kyle Freeland on Sunday. Five and one on the year. Adam Engel swings and misses. And that 
Strike two. Rockies are seeing all southpaws this weekend also. Tonight they saw Derek Holland and they hit him very well, obviously. In four innings, Holland gave up seven runs on eight hits. Tomorrow it's another guy who's going to be on the trading block, Jose Quintana. So look at the matchup tomorrow. Quintana against Jeff Hoffman. Sunday, Freeland and Carlos Radon. Rockies had come into the games with the second most hits in the National League against lefties this year. Only the Giants had one. Two balls, two strikes. Crowd of 38,386 tonight. He's still working hard behind the plate. Don't expect anything less. Taking a one nothing lead in L.A. on the Dodgers. My eight on the hill tonight for the Dodgers. Dodgers now lead Arizona by five and a half. The Rockies by eight and a half. And that loads the bases. And Sensatella clearly not himself. Now, eight, 17, 18 pitches, 50, 50. No, 17 pitches, you got uh, nine balls, eight strikes. Tim Anderson coming up. Anderson hit a two run home run in the seventh against Marquez. You have a nine run lead, but you don't want it to be no. a sloppy finish. No, and then you got to get Jordan going. And for Antonio, it's just not like him. To come up with that 50 50 split. Now he's dialed in. 
pitches on the Subaru strike zone. Two different locations. One and two. Anderson, first round pick of the White Sox, 17th overall in the June draft of 2013. Swung on and missed Sensatella. Fans, Anderson for the first out tonight. To bring up Willie Garcia. Got back to attacking the hitters. Blows this one by Anderson away. Second at bat, he singled off the bench in the seventh inning and then stayed in the ball game in right field for Alan Hansen. That's a strike. Earlier I said that the last time the Rockies scored 10 in a game was at the Cubs. It was actually against the Giants on June 16. Still a long time ago. Yeah. Either way. My reference to the Cubs was. That was the last time that the Rockies had a quote unquote laugher. They won 9 to 1 on June 10th in Chicago. Last time they had a really comfortable win because when they scored 10 against the Giants on June 16th, they won 10 to 8. The day before, they won 10 to 9. Slowly hit to Amarista, and he'll get the out at first. It'll score a run. Two gone. And it's 12 to 4. Smith's going to pinch hit. This is the pitcher spot in the leadoff position. One for four. You see pinch hitting for Devin. Ground ball right back to Senzatella. And the Rockies have won the first of three against the White Sox in convincing fashion 12 to 4 just what they needed and a big congratulations to buddy black that is his 700th career victory it's so good to see the rockies shaking hands they're now three and two on this final week before the all-star break nolan drove in five tonight to lead the way but there were a whole lot of offensive participants our jimmy john's delivery of the game a salute to the rockies offense they matched their season high with 12 runs this evening and they had 17 hits, which is a season high. And a lot of extra base hits. It is exactly what Rockies fans were asking for and exactly what that clubhouse needed. A big night offensively. 12 runs, 17 hits. The Rockies win comfortably 12 to 4 this evening. Marquez gets his sixth victory of the year. He's 6 and 4. Derek Holland is now 5 and 9. A lot to do in center field. Let's get you there right now. Here's Jenny and Sully. All right, thanks so much, Drew. 